I want to talk about the Kavaram Arois Aminch mit an Umreinem Geist. The graves uh, with uh, a man who had an unclean spirit. And I want to pray for Jewish people whose graveyard religion is keeping them unclean, where they spend all this time in the graveyard, yes. uh, writing down their requests for heavenly intercession on paper, picking up a candle and lighting it at the grave, walking around the uh, old hall of the Ribby, praying to the Ribby, who supposedly is hovering over the old hall. This is exactly what a man was delivered from because as soon as Moshek ben David stepped out of the boat, this madman accosted him. He was a man who made that road a dangerous place to travel. He was living in the cemetery. He was without his sound mind. He was naked. He was filthy. Screaming. Screaming, demonized, demon-possessed. There was legion inside of him. And everyone was afraid of him. He could actually rip the chains off. Nobody could hold him down. Everyone was afraid of him. And in the Gerizim area, it became well known that a carpenter from Nazareth, a rabbi, a ribby, an exorcist, cast the unclean spirit out of him. And having done that, we see the man clothed and in his right mind. And we see him with the clean, new spirit that is what we see when we look at people who are renewed by the Spirit of God. And that's what we're praying for out at Old Montefiore Cemetery, that these people who are in an unclean place among the Kevarim, the tombs, like this man in the burial caves, that they will be delivered and there's only one person who can do it. And he isn't hovering in a graveyard. He is in heaven. And he is interceding for us. He's the Kohen Le'olam al Divrati Melchizedek. He is our savior. And in this story, the man lives among the tombs. No one can keep him chained. He constantly screams and hits himself with stones. Then Moshek ben David speaks to the evil spirit that is inside the man. Actually, many spirits, legion. These demonic entities panic. In great fear, they beg the Moshiach bin Dovid, the Zunfunderoibister, not to torment them before their time, meaning that Gehinom was created for the demons who will be tormented. 
And if you refuse the salvation of God, you will be with them, also tormented. This is why the Basura Sakeola must be preached. And the plea of these demons is they ask for permission to enter a large herd of pigs nearby. And when they do, the pigs now possessed run into the lake and drown. The man is set free. The Hazarim swine herds and the townspeople come running out to see what has happened. And they see the former madman now seated, clothed, and in his right mind. He's delivered, and he's in his right mind. My friend, if you are hanging out in a cemetery trying to talk to a dead ribby, you are not in your right mind. You are in an unclean environment. You are not hearing the pure milk. You're not receiving the pure milk of the Word of God. And if you're urging Moshiach to go away and leave you alone, you're like these, these people who should have wanted him to stay. He had actually done a great favor for them. Now they could walk down that road by the cemetery and not be accosted by a madman. Now the madman was a preacher and he wanted to go on the Shalikas journey with the Moshiach, but no, he was instructed to go and tell his people the great things that the Lord has done for him. And so now they have a preacher in their town rather than a madman. And the man is sharing the testimony of what God has done for him. And that's, that's what we're doing here. All of us had unclean spirits before we came to the Lord. In fact, we were under the prince of the power of the air. And there was a, an evil spirit over us. And we did things we are, we are ashamed of now. But God in his mercy cleansed us from unclean demonic entities and the sway of the devil. And he brought us out into his glorious light. And through his blood we were delivered from all the demonic uh, bondage that you read about in the Pesach Seder where the lamb comes with his blood and delivers the people of Israel. And they are no longer slaves and they're no longer under the power of demonic uh, Egyptian gods and slavery and bondage. And I thank the Lord for his goodness to us and for this pericope in Mark chapter 5 about a man in a graveyard and we want to pray for that little room out there with the Sefer Torah that little room that somebody purchased two hundred thousand dollars in cash and turned it into a welcome center and where the sign says, let's welcome Moshiach with acts of goodness and kindness. My friend, Moshiach is not in the graveyard. He stood up and exited the graveyard. You must welcome him by faith. You must read the Brit Hadashah and not pray at a ribby's ohal, but pray in a Moshiach's kehila, where two or three are gathered in his name, and where the breaking of the bread, the prayers, the teaching, 
the spiritual power, the the, the uh, uh, casting out of the demonic, the glorious healings and miracles, the preaching, the teaching, the pure milk of the Word of God, all these things are a stair step to heaven because if your neshoma is regenerated and alive, you're ready for the bodily resurrection of the Tehiyas HaMasim where the body is made forever new like the body that was modeled for us by Moshiach whose body would not see Shachat. And this is so important for you to, to understand. And it's so important to see this. And I want you to look here at this uh, at this verse in Isaiah 53, verse 9. Do you see this word? Kof, base, resh, vav. His kever. It's talking about his tomb, his grave. Yes, Moshiach's grave. But notice, he's not there. Uh, his days are prolonged. He sees the light. He sees his seed. The Lord is satisfied with the travail of his soul. And he lives on. And also, notice what it says. The wicked, when Avshalom bin Dovid was hanged on the tree, 2 Shmuel chapter 18, verse 14, he was hung there by himself. But when Moshek bin Dovid was hanged on the tree, he would be there with the wicked and with a rich man in his death. And that's a very important scripture because we know that in Isaiah 53, hallelujah, the rich man that is mentioned there prophetically 700 years before it happened was the one who took the body and had it wrapped, wrapped in the Takrahim and put in his own tomb. Hallelujah. And when the Hevra Kadisha came to put on the spices, they were interrupted by Shabbos and came back later. But it says there in Isaiah chapter 53, Verse 9, he made his kever with the Rashaim and with the Aisher, the rich man. Matthew 27, 57 to 60. Bimotev, in his deaths, this is an intensive plural, should be translated singular, death. And it means his death is so crucial because he had done no Hamas, neither was any Mirmar deceit in his mouth. And therefore, he was wounded for our transgressions. And his kever becomes our kever. And we don't spend our days in an unclean cemetery praying to a dead ribby. We have a living Ribby, and he is the Savior of all who call upon him. And he modeled the body that we will have, a marvelous spiritual body, a resurrection body, a body fit for eternity, a body that will never get old, never get sick, never wear out, a body such as he appeared when he met with his Shulahim and his disciples, his Talmidim, in the 40 days after he stood up alive when the Kohen was waving the first Omer and the Omer were counted, 
the at the end of that period, the mikvah of the Ruach HaKodesh came and the Shulahim, the Orthodox Jews, began to preach the resurrection of the dead, the fulfillment of Judaism to everyone. And 3,000 Jews came to faith and the whole world was turned upside down. We need to understand that Judaism was looking for a resurrection. And that's why the Moshiach's body would not see Shahat, Psalm 1610. And that's why Isaiah speaks about the Moshiach with uh, uh, a real, uh, with shadings of the, uh, uh, the various sons of David, Avshalom ben David hanging on the tree, Hezekiah ben David, whose days are prolonged, Uzziah ben David, who has leprosy, and other uh, uh, other shades that you can see when you read Isaiah 53, you can see uh, that he's talking about a mediator uh, whose death is a korban, a sacrifice, and a sham guilt offering. That even though we are sinners and we've gone our own way, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And after the suffering of his nephesh, the Lord is satisfied. And even after his kever, he, his days are prolonged and he sees his seed. He sees resurrection life himself. And he brings us to the same knowledge by, by, Knowledge of him, my righteous servant, will justify many. So therefore there is no, no condemnation for those who are in Mashiach. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. I don't want to hang around cemeteries. You know, a Kohen is not supposed to do that anyway. Did you know that? Uh, a, a cemetery is an unclean place. It's basically a hopeless place. There's no, no hope in the cemetery. There's only one grave that is empty. All the prophets, even the prophets of Judaism, are in the tombs. Only the living Savior of the living God of Israel only he, the Bar Enosh on the glory clouds, only he could make a ransom for many and stand up on the third day. And death could not defeat him. And so we are not interested in entering the cemetery, in going to the welcome center, in going to a hospitality center, on the edge of the graveyard. We're not interested in vain prayers in an unclean place to a dead ribby. We are interested in one thing, the living Moshiach. Do you understand you're listening to the voice of someone who was dead in trespasses and sins? And the, God, and the Lord had mercy on me. My mother's prayers were finally answered after 28 years of heartache with a reprobate son, a prodigal. She had to chase me to Beverly Hills and drag me to the house of God where I heard preaching. And the Holy Spirit came on me and changed me. Myron Taylor. And I repented. Hallelujah. And this happened... And it could happen to you. Yes, you could be that person in grave clothes when he says, Lazarus, come forth. And you come forth in grave clothes. But your grave clothes are put away and you put on Moshiach and you become a new creature. And all things pass away. And all things have become new. Lord, I pray right now that you'll help me to get Naomi's interlinear, digitally 
put up on our website. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Hallelujah. We thank you for the Yiddish Matthew we have with uh, the Yiddish, the uh, transliterated Yiddish, and the Yiddish translation into English. Help us, Lord, with the other 26 books. We pray, Lord, for these men that are meeting in London regarding this on Linda's birthday on Thursday. We thank you, Lord, for what's going to happen on Friday with the Greek alignment of the Yiddish. We thank you for what you're doing this week. We thank you, Lord, for the miracles that you're pouring out on us. We thank you, Lord, that we serve a living God who hears and answers our prayers because he's alive. The Zud Pundaroibishter, he raised from the dead. He is alive. The Ruach HaKodesh is alive. Elohim Ha'av is alive. God is a Had. Shema Yisrael Anunoy Orhenu Anunoy Had. We cannot explain it, but we know when the Atik Yomin received the Bar Enosh and sent the Ruach HaKodesh on Shavuos, that this is what the Tanakh says. This is what is in the scriptures. If men don't want it, if they reject it, if they don't understand it, and of course it really can't be understood, it's a mystery. We don't even really preach it, we preach repentance. But this is true. Mm. And this is truth that we are living witnesses of. Look at our lives, we have been changed. Go into the prisons and see all these hardened criminals who are now going to the chapel services, who have sweet faces and new personalities, and who are finally reading the Bible. Yeah. You say, yeah, they're jailbirds, they got jailhouse religion, and they've got nothing to do but read the Bible, so they read the Bible. No, my friend, you don't understand. God is doing miracles. And the very fact that you're putting up resistance right now might mean that somebody like you couldn't get saved unless you were in prison. And I get letters every week from people who want Bibles who are in prison. Mm. And they had to get there to find out that they really were, lo and behold, a sinner. Now the bars are preaching to them. Mm -hmm. And now they know they need God. Father, I pray right now that someone be, will be convicted and they will run out of that unclean cemetery and run to a clean house of God where the Bible is believed and faithfully taught. Get themselves a Bible and come to the cleanness of salvation in the Ruach HaKodesh where the Kippura washes away the sins. The scapegoat Moshiach carries them away, Nasa. That's also in Isaiah 53. In Leviticus 16, it's, it's alluded to that our sins are carried away by the Moshiach. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord, to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the Basura Sake Olah yes. that we might find 